Bacterial Association. Um, we're going to share with you today a, a, you know, a few details about the program, how it works, and, um, and how you can get involved and, and how you can access the funding for this for, for yourself or, or perhaps your team as well. So without further ado, um, we'll just do some quick introductions. So that's my, myself, uh, Sam Hitchin Ray, uh, Partnerships Director at the Institute of Financial Operations and Leadership. And uh, my role at the, um, at the Institute really involves working with our partners um, like the Global Power Oil Association um, to ensure that we're bringing value to, to our members through, through our partners. Um, so I'm glad to be joined today by um, Mel and, and Kate. So I'll just pass you over to, to Mel now to give us a, a quick introduction. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Melanie Pitsy. I'm the CEO of the Global Payroll Association. Um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I've been working in the payroll industry for 25 years now, which has gone very quickly. Um, so great to, to join you all today and, and to have a chance to discuss what we're doing within the um, apprenticeship scheme. So over to you, Kate. Hello, my name is Kate Upcraft. I'm one of the tutors with the Global Peril Association who's been involved in pulling together the apprenticeship offering that we have. I'm also a consultant with my own um, payroll consultancy company. I've been involved in payroll even longer than Mel because I'm much, much older. So I've been in payroll <laughs> for 30 years this autumn and uh, right through operational payroll and now I'm a consultant running my own business. Excellent. Thank you, Mel and Kate. It's glad, glad to have you uh, with us today. Um, so let, let's just you know kick off the, the discussion today and, and the launch with, um, well, quickly a first look at our two organisations. So um, the Institute of Financial Operations, um, most people who are joining us today will have undoubtedly heard of us, um, as I'm sure you've been on lots of our, our other webinars. Uh, but we uh, essentially, we offer just over 13 um, different online certifications and apprenticeships uh, across lots of different areas, um, including accounts payable, procure to pay, accounts received, ordered to cash, um, shared services, and now, uh, payroll as well. So we've got roughly 30,000 um, students and members across um, 22 different countries. Um, so we're a global organisation, um, and uh, you know, typically most of our members tend to be UK, EU, um, and, and North America based. Um, here's some of our clients you can see on the right hand side that we're very proud to be working with, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll be, able, be able to add a few more logos to that soon. So over to you, Mel, can you tell us a bit about the, the GPA? Yeah, so I, I suppose we're like a one-stop shop for anybody within payroll, so whether or not it's global or in-country. So some people are surprised when we talk about the UK, because UK is still a global country, it's still part of the global remit. And we have members all around the world, we offer training, um, and luckily for us we've been offering online training for a, a number of years, and Kate is our UK trainer. Um, we also have our Global Payroll Awards, uh, unfortunately we had streaming issues this year, um, um, which was very stressful, but I'm, I'm glad to say that the streaming's going well today, so I'm not jinxed. Um, and um, we're, we're all very passionate about payroll, I suppose. We're, we're payroll geeks. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that out loud, but we are. Uh, and we, so we try and assist people. We try to be the middle people. Um, people come to us if they need help with providers or training. Um, so just to go on the next slide, just to give you an idea of some of our um, members, we do have members all around the world. Um, we have some very large names, but we also help uh, people who are in charities or one-man bands. So obviously there are big names there, but we do help people across the board and all over the world. And I'm, I'm ashamed to say that sometimes I have to Google to see where some of these countries are. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're in a, a good fortunate position. Good, excellent. Well, good to get a nice overview there of the Global Payroll Association. Um, so. The discussion, first discussion point for today is um, kind of why we're we're launching this um, this payroll administrator apprenticeship and and what it means for, for you as perhaps an individual looking to go into payroll or as a, a manager of a team who are um, looking to maybe upskill and, and train your 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 payroll team. So we're going to start from from right from the beginning, um, the apprenticeship standard, um, and what what that means when I refer to the apprenticeship standard is the set of knowledge, skills and behaviours that um, an individual must demonstrate as part of the apprenticeship to achieve the qualification. So 
how does the, the, the apprenticeship standard come together, I hear you ask. Um, essentially, the companies that you can see on the screen now um, form what's called a, a trailblazer group, which is essentially a group of, of employers who um, have their opinion on what they feel that someone who's going to do this qualification should be able to demonstrate um, across their knowledge, skills and behaviours. Um, once that's all agreed, that then gets approved by the Institute of Apprenticeships um, and Technical Education and then it becomes a uh, what they call an apprenticeship standard which can then be delivered by um, training providers. Now the way that that's delivered is um, can vary so the the standard will detail what the learner must learn and, and, and know as part of the apprenticeship standard but how that's achieved um, is it, it varies depending on who's delivering it so training providers can, can create their own training materials um, but quite often what happens is um, training providers will go to professional bodies within the within the industry to source materials. So what we've done here is, you know, we've worked with the the um, Global Payroll Association who have developed those materials that fit, um, you know, side by side with the apprenticeship standard. So anyone that does the course um, essentially ticks all the boxes for the the apprenticeship standard. Um, so the, the that apprenticeship standard, sorry, was actually approved. Um, by the Institute for Apprenticeships on um, the 13th of June 2018. So it's not um, by any means a, a brand new apprenticeship standard. It's something that's been um, available for a few years and there have been you know, a few people who have been through the, the apprenticeship. So why are we looking to, to launch it? Or why are we launching this now? You know, Three years down the line, why are we launching it at, at this point? Um, I think to, to understand that a little bit more, we just need to look at um, kind of what the, the current market offering is in terms of this apprenticeship standard. Um, so Mel and, and Kate, maybe you could to, could um, you know give us some input here on, on what you understand the current market offering looks like and maybe what you know maybe some of your members have, have told you that they've experienced if they've been through the apprenticeship or they've got you know members of their team studying this, yeah. this apprenticeship at the moment. Be honest with you um we got quite a lot of pressure from our members and we're disappointed to say that we weren't delivering the apprenticeship scheme um so mm -hmm. so there has been a pressure from our side but it wasn't that because we didn't want to deliver it it was actually the opportunity to make sure that we're providing the right material so from what i've heard from our members um was that they were, they were slightly disappointed uh with some of the material that had been uh, provided by some of the providers who were not payroll experts um, so payroll people, um, for those of you that are, have joined us today, we all know that you're very passionate about the industry and you want things to be delivered and, um, and maybe critical when things aren't delivered correctly, obviously, because that's your job. You know, you're you're about being correct, about you know having your payroll correct every every month or week. Um, so we 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 heard some stories. Um, that maybe some of the training that were that was provided wasn't actually by payroll professionals um, and that maybe that the, the, the payroll the apprenticeship apprentices weren't um, being mentored or weren't supported by payroll professionals uh, so that, that there was a, a problem if they had a question or just needed that support and I think you know no matter what age you are if you're looking at um, upskilling or being trained you want to have support from somebody who actually understands what you're being taught um, and and ha also having ongoing support so I think that's really um, the key things that we heard from our members I don't know Kate if you had anything extra to add to that at all I think one of the problems that you can come over if you you're trying to cover too many bases as a, a training provider is that there can be a temptation to um, provide the slides to a trainer who effectively just delivers what's on the slides which is fine until you get a question from a delegate who wants to understand either a con uh, concept or wants to relate it to something operationally in their own organization and then I'm afraid you start to come a little bit unstuck if you're not somebody who's actually living and breathing um, the profession because you only have the you might be an excellent presenter but if you haven't actually got the, the technical operational background 
um, that's when the credibility can start to be a little bit difficult for, for the delegates because you're not able then to, to actually explain a little bit more from your your day-to-day your -day expertise. So I think that's what I'm hearing from people that um, they really want to be talking and taught by somebody who's doing this on a day-to-day -day basis who can relate to their concerns uh, and, and some of the, the, the quite um, understandable um, worries about am I going to be able to do this have I got to be great at maths you know, all these sort of things that um, you can only reassure people if you really know that and it's not just that you're you know you're a great presenter and you're just reading off the slides what uh, what you've been told to deliver for the day yeah so it sounds like it, it's at the moment the kind of offering is, is lacking a bit of um, or individuals who have understanding of the complex situations and how to apply these theories and, and things into real life and, and, and into put them into practice in, in their in their workplace really. Um, would you say that that's kind of where, where things sit at the moment? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So so I suppose then we you know we can see then that there's a, a you know a, a gap I suppose um, in terms of what's been being delivered at the moment. So how are we kind of going to, to fulfil this? Um, Mel, would you be able to tell us a little bit about um, you know, what, what the, the GPA can, can bring to the table to kind of fill that gap and, and um, you know, how you would be kind of presenting at maybe a slightly better offering than what's available at the moment? Yeah, um, so I think what, what I've realised is and what I've heard is that, you know, that, that there's a, a lack of mentoring or support with payroll uh, the, you know, the, the payroll apprentices um, and that we're looking to Sorry, I think we might have lost uh, yeah. might have lost Mel there. Can you can you hear me, Kate? Yes, I can hear you, Sam. Can you hear me? We we'll have regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I think Mel's back. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't know what you heard then. So that was my connection. Um, we will. What What did you hear about the mentoring? Yeah, uh, we, so, yeah. The word just the very start. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Um. So, oh my God, the stream means happening again. Um. So we'll <laughs> we'll have a mentor. So one thing that's really important is that our um, apprentices have mentors that they can turn to and that they can ask questions to. But also have an assessment tool so we can see where where the apprentice is at, at every stage. And it's not to put pressure on them, but to see where they're lacking in the skill set and for to make sure that they uh, learn more or, or have some support from their trainer. Um, we um, have a portal as well, a dedicated portal, so they'll have a lot of um, information that they can look at. They, they'll have online training, we'll have recorded training. So we'll offer them a lot of resources um, and also support, because I think the support thing is the really important side of this apprenticeship scheme. Um, Kate, I don't know if you've got anything else that you wanted to add at all on that. Um, yeah, I suppose it sort of comes back to the sort of thing I do on a day-to-day -day basis because as a, as a payroll consultant and particularly this year because of how difficult life has been to be a payroll professional who suddenly had to learn a completely new way of paying people a government grant, I spend my day helping people with individual support queries about their own organisation. So I see this sort of moving seamlessly hopefully into the same sort of support that we can offer to apprentices that we've got that it's not just a you know a help desk where you can pick the phone up and ask something but an actual I really want to not just be told how to do this technically but I also just want to talk to somebody else who's in the same situation as me and, and therefore can empathize with what I'm going through at this particular time so I've certainly um, found that that's been a very valuable resource for people over this year. And I think, you know, from the work I'd always done a, as a trainer, but much more now that I've moved into the online and all the different um, comms channels that we now use to support people, 
that's going to be very valuable to apprentices to not just sit them in a classroom and deliver a session and bring them back two weeks later, but have that constant, whatever time of the day or night or comms channel, they can talk to somebody who can reassure them and encourage them on in their studies. And just to add to that, oh sorry Sam, just, just to add to that, we'll also have a, a forum and we've also got the GPA network app where they'll, they'll have access so different ages may want to communicate different ways to different uh, payroll people so we'll have a, the forum on the um, on the app and also we'll have a, a, an individual forum for the apprentices so that they can talk to each other you know just to ask each other questions so we have that availability as well. Excellent so anyone that, that joins this program then it sounds like they're going to be supported from start to finish and not just supported but supported by um, professionals like like yourself Kate who work in the industry um, who can you know answer those complex complex questions and help with different scenarios but um, just be there as a, as a sounding board as well I guess because you know people just want to quite a lot of the time want to share their opinions and, and get kind of some validation on, on what their thoughts are one of the difficult things in, in a lot of smaller businesses um, is that, um, and the apprentices will find this as they go on in their um, professional lives, is they may begin as apprentices with others, other colleagues who are doing payroll, but they'll soon realise that they're going to have to become very self-sufficient in this industry because in most organisations there may be only them. Um, so unless they're going to the sort of bureau payroll agent type world, they are going to need to be able to be resilient, but develop a network of support. And whether that's the other apprentices in their cohort or just within the industry, you know, so much of what I do on a day to day basis is joining people together who are in the same sectors or same particular um, situation in their career. Um, because it is a very lonely profession at times and you can never know everything. I mean, I, I care about I've been doing it 30 years, but I learn something brand new every day because it's a massive subject. So it's just really, you know, linking people together and giving them the confidence that once you've got that network uh, and you've got a qualification behind you, you will be able to be you know, a sole practitioner, but still have that support out, out there that you start off with as an apprentice. Yeah, I think I think that's the key thing that, you, that you've identified there, Kate, is that, um, you know, someone like yourself understands that, that that's the situation and that's where the, the you know, the, the career path or what the, the, the scenarios that people might face themselves in. Um, whereas potentially, you know, if someone from a, a training provider who doesn't have any experience in the industry, but is, you know, a very good trainer, um, might not have that knowledge and might not be able to share that and, and you know, set expectations for, for those learners, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so we've looked at then, you know, what the current situation is with with the offering. We've looked at, you know, how um, the GPA are, are working with us to offer, you know, something that kind of fills the gap um, and you know provides a lot of support for for learners as they they join the program. Um, I think what we should look at really is um, kind of the change and, and the evolution of apprenticeships, um, just to put everything into, into context. Um, so in terms of, you know, apprenticeships, um, I'm sure, you know, none of us here and none of us on the, uh, on, on the call were, are old enough to, to probably have experienced what we can see in the, in the image there in terms of that apprenticeship. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but well, I mean, what, what are your thoughts, um, uh, Mel, to start off with um, on, on apprenticeships? Say if I, would have mentioned to you, you know, the word apprenticeship, um, you know, a few years ago. What would what would have sprung to mind um, initially? What 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 would what yeah. would you associate with an apprenticeship? Um, I actually um, recruited a couple of apprenticeship people uh, a few years back, um, and it was a you know it's a very different system to what it is today. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I don't think that the, the support was available to those individuals than what is available now. It's more of a professional, um, organi not organisation qualification. It's more, it's more. There's more support, I think. So, if you said to me about apprenticeship scheme, I would, you know, before it would have been young individuals that didn't want to study, couldn't get a job, and then that's that's what the next offering was, other than staying at home with their parents. Yeah. And I think that's that's quite common. I mean, what what were your thoughts, Kate? I mean, 
if we would have mentioned you know the word apprenticeship to you a few years ago what, what would you have uh, kind of associated that with yes i I'd, I'd agree with mal i think there was also um until the government recognized that we had got a huge skills issue across the whole of the uk and that was not going to be addressed by churning people out of sometimes quite questionable degree courses which they spent a lot of money on but didn't suit the world of work at all um, then seeing that you could actually start to get a professional qualification right the way through from age 16 and 18 rather than bringing people into the workplace at you know at 21 22 and I was I suppose it came home to me about three or four years ago when I started working with a particular large accountancy practice that had a very structured entry program into payroll but they brought people in both from accountancy degrees and on apprenticeships and by far all of the time the apprentices were the ones who went on much more quickly into senior jobs because they were learning on the job and operationally whereas those who came in with an accountancy degree and whether that's it's the fault of the higher education system that it's not turning out people who are operationally able to hit the ground running but certainly their experience was and of talking me talking to the people who i met from both cohorts is that the apprentices who had come in um, predominantly at this eight, um, were A-level entry, but obviously younger than that as well in different sectors, found that this had been much more of a, an opportunity for them to earn as well as make progress very quickly and, and grow up very quickly as well. So I would never now, if uh, you know, as a mum myself, would not have necessarily encouraged my two children to assume that the only way to to get a really fastly progressing career would have been to go to university the fact mm. we've got right up to degree level and beyond apprenticeships now is transformed what offering is there for for young people and existing members of the workforce and and that's great for our profession because now people are choosing to join it with a qualification not as we did, or I did, accidentally becoming you know, a payroll professional. So it, it's transformed what what opportunities there are for people. Yeah, excellent. I think, I mean, I think that is the the point of apprenticeships, really, isn't it? You know, they give you the opportunity to to learn in in the in a practical workplace, um, rather than just understanding the theory of of, of a role and how it fits into an organisation. Um, so you know, it, it is invaluable, really. And apprenticeships have you know, over um, the last few years, gone through massive sort of reforms and um, and introduced the um, apprenticeship levy, um, which I'm sure most people have heard of, but maybe don't have a full understanding of how that works. Um, and then, and also the change from what used what apprenticeships used to be, which was um, frameworks, where it was um, essentially a framework was a, a list of um, all the things that the um, a learner must understand as part of the apprenticeship and it gave um, instructions on how that had to be delivered and, and what the material must have been whereas now standards um, the change from apprenticeship frameworks to standards standards have much more um, uh, flexibility where you can use whichever material you, you want to use um, as long as it teaches the, the right things that, that people need to learn as part of the apprenticeship so um, just looking at, at apprenticeships today, um, you know, how have they changed? Well, um, the first thing is apprenticeships are, are for everyone now. So it's not just, you know, the young and inexperienced who are coming in, um, in, an, in you know, as part of their early career into an organisation. Um, apprenticeships are for, for anyone, regardless of age, um, regardless how long they've been doing the role for um, or how long they've been employed by the company. You can offer an apprenticeship to, to someone, you know, regardless of, of their age and experience. Um, the, the way that they're delivered now um, is, is very different as well. You know, there's a lot of blended learning um, across online um, uh, kind of workshops, masterclasses, um, and work-based um, learning as well. So applying those, what you learn in those masterclasses to, to the workplace. And then there's also, you know, recognized certificates now and qualifications that you can gain, um, such as, as part of this um, apprenticeship, there would be a, a you know a nationally recognised um, apprenticeship qualification that, that the learners would gain. 
Um, so just to just one thing that I'm just going to touch on because I, I did mention it, the apprenticeship levy. Um, just to explain what what that kind of means, um, essentially any any business who um, has a payroll an annual payroll bill of over three million pounds in in England, um, they will pay into what's called the apprenticeship levy at a rate of 0.5 percent of um, of the excess of the three million, so um, that goes into into your own your organisation's account, and uh, and that money can either be spent on apprenticeship training, um, or 18 months later you lose what went in into that account in month one. So we found you know this came into effect in 2017, and we found that um, so many organisations perhaps didn't make use of, of that money and then 18 months later we're starting to see you know big chunks of of, of cash that were, were essentially being lost from their their apprenticeship levy account and uh, and that goes back into the government which is then recycled for um, apprenticeship training for the for smaller organizations um so essentially you know what, what we're looking at here is you know there's, there's a lot of change in apprenticeships there's lots of reform and um you know it's for the better, really, and uh, you know, apprenticeships now are, are for everyone. So, just to kind of um, back that up, I mean, there's some kind of key stats here that we've got, um, which show that you know, 46% of, of apprenticeships um, that started during 2018-19 were, were people of aged, um, of age 25 and over, um, and uh, the largest increase was in the number of people doing apprenticeships was um, the age group 35 to 44. So I think what, what that kind of tells us is that uh, more and more um, organisations are starting to spend this apprenticeship levy um, and their, their funds on training those that are already in the organisation and perhaps have been with them for, for a number of years. But it's, it, you know, the funds are being used to train and upskill existing staff rather than um, just bringing in new staff onto apprenticeship schemes. Um, so I think that's going to be a big thing for, for this particular apprenticeship um, uh, because you know almost every company will have a, a payroll team and um, I'm sure that there are lots of people out there who perhaps haven't you know have, have learned from experience rather than doing a, a payroll qualification perhaps so there's an opportunity now for, for those individuals to, to gain a qualification in payroll um, and, uh, and and get that behind them so um, in terms of the, the the next kind of discussion point, then I'm, I'm just going to kind of turn this one over to to you, Mel, and and, and you, Kate. Um, in terms of the the content of the actual program that that we're going to be offering here, um, can you tell us a bit about you know how the how the program came together and and you know how it was written and and what the the program consists of? Yeah, so I think I'll start off by saying thank you, Kate. I think I nearly killed Kate during the summer. <laughs> So um, during the pandemic, obviously there's, you know, such a busy time and so much was going on, but actually I think it gave some of us an opportunity to take a step back and, and be able to do some things that maybe we haven't had a chance to do. Um, so one of the uh, key things that we were asked to do was develop the apprenticeship scheme for one of our clients. And, um, I asked Kate, um, and luckily she said yes, if she could write the apprenticeship scheme. And I think it's fair to say, Kate, we well, we both realised there was a lot more involved than what we initially um, thought there would be, um, and that's why I said that maybe I nearly killed Kate during the summer, <laughs> during the summer. Um, so I'll, I'll let Kate explain more about what's involved uh, within the actual subjects of um, the uh, uh, apprenticeship scheme. But I think what what we decided to do was to really make sure that everything was available online because we don't really know what's going to happen over the next year or even two years. Obviously, we've got the vaccines, but you know what what does the the landscape look like for workers? Um, so we are traditionally an online organisation anyway. We have things in place, but it's just to make sure that we've got this available for the apprenticeship scheme and to really work out how we want the apprenticeship scheme to work. So one of the key things for me is really important that the individuals are supported. So Kate fantastically wrote the apprenticeship scheme and for my part is to make sure that we have a programme available, we have the tools available to make sure that the apprentices 
feel supported and also we can carry on supporting them and educating them uh, for when they want to so we have a bank of information available um, and it is an 18 month program so it's a long program uh, that we we need to fill but um Kate uh, obviously you've got a, top, a, a list of topics there but I think um, is it fair to say that you learned stuff yourself as you're going through all of these <laughs> Um, well, I certainly learned how much time it took to do this as thoroughly as it needed to be done. Um, and look, we've, we've mapped the 32 modules that I wrote back to the apprenticeship um, standard. So um, we are teaching to the standard because that is the only sensible thing to do. So if you look at that list and think, well, the, I can spot something that's not on there. Well, if it's not on there, it's because at level three, you're not expected to know about it. And it's something more complicated that might fit into level five, which is the, the next level you can go to in terms of qualification after this entry level. This is an entry level qualification, but it's divided into four distinct chunks. So the first 12 modules are what we call payroll core and they are overview modules um, for the apprentices. Then we go on to the next 12 modules which are not only um, taught um, in terms of either recorded or live um, sessions but they're supported by a workbook as well. Um, so what we think is slightly different about this qualification is that you practice all the way through the technical modules and, and you do um, actual exercises so that that tries to replicate the sort of things that you will get at your endpoint assessment in some of these technical areas where you will actually have to not just talk about things but calculate things because as much as um, people might, um, and hopefully this year has dispelled this, think that all we do is press a button and our software does everything else, that is not how our profession operates. You have to be able to calculate things from the bottom up and do it without any particular software that's going to help you. So that's what the payroll technical modules are for. There's then um, a series of modules about pensions um, because as well, since 2012, of course, we've all had to become pensions experts in our um, particular profession since we've had to embrace auto enrolment. So it wouldn't have been appropriate to have an entry level qualification that didn't have a particular focus on pensions as well. And when we were initially developing the standard, because I was part of the Trailblazer group as well, there was a strong feeling that pensions had to be part of the offering because lots of people may well work just within the pensions arena themselves running pensions payrolls so that was also a very important area to understand that that you know that can be a profession in itself and then the final module is all about regulation and compliance so it brings together what the law is around all the other 31 modules um, and really draws all those threads together so people are clear who are the different regulatory bodies that they will come into contact with and the things that they have to do on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual uh, basis in order to stay on the right side of the law. So there's a lot of content. It has to be kept up to date, which is another huge challenge that we've, uh, we have to address because every single slide needs to be up to date as at that tax year and that's one of the, the most important parts about this training is that it is not an off-the-shelf package that you know exists for the next X number of years it's a live qualification that is changing all the time which is why you also need trainers who are involved embedded in this day-to-day -day who know what is happening and can keep the material fresh and, and appropriate and can I just make a point that um, some of the feedback we received from some of the other people that have had apprentices through um, the scheme uh, was that they felt that it wasn't written to the standard. So one of the key things when Kate and I spoke was to ensure that it's written to the standard, that it's not just payroll courses that have been written that are just lumped together into different modules so I think that that's the key thing for for me and, and also important for Kay that it is actually written for the apprenticeship scheme and not just muddled right. together. We, we, the easy option for me because I've got a bank of courses that I deliver all the time as a consultant I could have just said oh right well in week one they can go on this course of mine and in week four they can do that one and we'll cut a bit out of that one and put it into that one and that we didn't feel was was right um, because this needs to be 
delivered in the way that they're going to be tested on it at the end so that it is rigorous but it's structured to the standard otherwise we'd just be throwing people into an endpoint assessment that they've got no chance that they're actually going to pass and that's not appropriate to their employer either who has used their levy funds um, you know, and these levy funds are very sought after. There'll be lots of parts of organisations that want to train, and we've got a pitch for those as as the payroll team alongside everybody else. So, therefore, the, the what we need to do is to make sure that we're giving people value for money. And if they're coming to us for a, a qualification, what they get is tailored to that, and it's not a just a cheap way of of, of using their levy funds and taking off the shelf courses to deliver that. Yeah, I think that, that's a, a it's a really important point that you've made in terms of having the course um, tailored to the actual apprenticeship standard, um, because you know as I mentioned earlier, um, with, with with an apprenticeship standard, you can deliver it using whatever materials you you want. You can create your own materials if you wanted to, um, but the the issues that arise from that, which you know do get reported every now and then from um, you know, where training providers have tried to deliver an apprenticeship using their own materials is that there are gaps and so the learners don't learn everything that they need to as part of the apprenticeship and then they get to what we call the, the end point assessment that you just touched on there Kate, um, where they don't have all the, they, they can't display all the knowledge, skills and behaviours that they, they need to to get through end point assessment and inevitably don't pass the final assessment um, which you know, in some in some circumstances, um, can be costly for the business because the, the, there can be a cost involved with putting a learner back through um, an endpoint assessment. Um, but also, it's quite damaging, I think, I feel to to the learner as well. You know, it'd be a big knock to the confidence, um, and and not really their fault because they haven't been provided with the the right level of um, material to get them to the point where they need to be. So I think it's we definitely need to stress that this material. Has has been written exactly and, and mapped exactly to the apprenticeship standard. So, the, I guess in theory, Kate, we're, we're saying that um, if someone completes this course, they will have met all of the requirements of the apprenticeship standard. Is that right? Yes, um, certainly that's the intention. We can't guarantee, of course, that everybody's retained all the information that they've been taught and are able to put it into practice. So you can't mm -hmm. say that every single person who um, goes through this is going to breeze through endpoint assessment. It's still a rigorous qualification. That's why it lasts 18 months. And, and people have got to put their own effort into practicing and understanding and being supported in the workplace. Because although we talk about support, we, we are not people's employers. And when you, you have an apprentice, you also have a role as an employer in giving them the opportunities to practice and the support um, in the workplace as well to, to try out things and sometimes get them wrong and then, then try again. But I certainly know from the large businesses and clients that I work with that those who are big enough to have pay payroll teams now have changed their attitude completely over the last few years because it's so difficult to recruit experienced payroll professionals now because people hold on to them. They would much rather bring somebody in who's got no experience at all, whatever age they are, and train them themselves. And the apprenticeship offers that opportunity because then you know that you're getting somebody who actually is going to be able to do what their CV says because it's very easy to say that you're a payroll professional because you've keyed some data in and then you know run some reports. That is not what our profession needs and this sort of standard is what our profession needs. So that people really are able to do what their CV says. Absolutely. So um, just, just going back, um, Kate, to one thing that you mentioned a little bit earlier on is that this course is um, for you know an entry level course. Would you say that it, it's suitable, though, for someone who's perhaps already been working in payroll but hasn't gained any formal qualification or, you know, hasn't maybe, you know, hasn't taken their career to management level at, 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 at present um, but wants to get a qualification behind them? Oh, absolutely. And when I'm training, when I'm not doing this, when I'm training as a consultant myself, the people that I will get on my basic payroll courses, some of them might have been in payroll for 10 to 20 years, but A, they've never had 
had any training they have just sat alongside somebody um and and be because it evolves so much this profession there's always the opportunity to learn to understand why you've been doing something for all that time and never understood why you did it that particular way or to realize you've actually been doing something the wrong way or a very long-winded way because nobody's ever told you that there is an easier way because of the way you've learned on the job so the, there's always that opportunity for, for people however long they've been doing something to then get some recognition for what they've been doing and a lot of people you know of my age have never had the chance to take a, a qualification I didn't go to university I I joined a management training scheme at 18 and, and worked my way through through the business and ended up accidentally becoming the payroll manager at MS, you know and but I had the chance because my employer was far thinking enough to take a, a qualification in payroll um, whilst I was working. And it was the making of me you know, to think that I would be doing what I'm doing now. That would never have happened if my employer hadn't been far sighted enough to think that's what will give somebody the chance to do, even though they've been in work for a number of years. So absolutely. So it's not just about youngsters. It's about giving people who've been doing it that credibility and belief in themselves uh, as well as the youngsters coming into the profession. Excellent, really good to hear a bit about your journey there Kate. Um, so in turn, just before we kind of move on to this slide, in terms of um, that course content and the, um, the breakdown, sorry the table of, of contents, um, Mel, is, is that available from, from you uh, at the GPA on, on the website perhaps or, or is that in yeah. production at the moment? It's in production at the moment but if you can um, contact me um, then I can send that, that through to, to whoever needs it. Yeah, okay, excellent. So um, just to kind of round that, that part off a little bit then, in terms of when someone completes that um, this apprenticeship, the offering that, that's coming from us is that you know the individual will um, upon successful completion of the the endpoint assessment they'll achieve the, the national apprenticeship qualification um, they'll achieve a certificate from the global payroll association and they'll also achieve a certificate from the institute of financial operations and leadership which is you know a very unique offering um, from what i understand and, and from my knowledge i i understand that um, the current offering is is you know just one of those, so it's the the um, national uh, apprenticeship qualification that, that learners are achieving at the moment. Um, not sure if you are aware, um, Mel or Kate, of any other certificates that are available as part of this apprenticeship. Um, no, been no. focusing on ours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So um, I think you know the, the offering uh, essentially from 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 us is is very unique, and it's a you know a three. Um, way certificate that, that the learners will gain um, at no additional cost I might add as well. Um, so in terms of um, who can enrol and, and who this um, apprenticeship is, is aimed at then, um, you know the, the, the apprenticeship itself is for uh, both existing employees who, who want to be upskilled um, and, and it's for new employees who, who want to join the organisation as part of an apprenticeship scheme as well. So there's no restrictions on, you know, who you want to put on onto the apprenticeship scheme. Obviously, as long as the individual wants to do the the, the apprenticeship, that's an important part. Um, then then it's open to to everyone. Um, and in terms of the the, the course itself, it's uh, a level three uh, qualification. And to put that into context, uh, a level three equates to A levels. Um, so it's uh, you know one stage prior to, to doing a degree or a foundation degree essentially. Um, so although it is aimed at you know, an entry level, um, it is definitely um, substantial enough for uh, someone who, who you know, as we just discussed, someone who's been working in payroll for you know, maybe a number of years, um, but perhaps hasn't got a, a qualification behind them to, to date. Um, and just to kind of um, play on that a little bit, there is a, um, uh, something that's done when when someone does enrol in the apprenticeship there's uh, what's called a skills scan where um, the training provider comes and meets with the, the employee or currently due to restrictions it would be done through through zoom or, or skype etc and and we um, assess 
whether the, the individual is of the right level in terms of you know their skills and experience and, and knowledge um, to come onto a level three apprenticeship, but also from the other side, you know, if they've already got a, a foundation degree, perhaps in, in payroll management, are they really uh, are they right the, the right sort of level to come onto a level three? Perhaps not. Maybe they would be better suited to a level five um, apprenticeship instead. So there is that kind of um, I guess barrier where we where we do. Um, come and meet with the, the learner and make sure that they're you know the right sort of individual to come onto the apprenticeship because the last thing that anyone wants is for someone to come onto an apprenticeship that's not right for them um, and then they essentially don't get to endpoint assessment or don't pass the endpoint assessment and um, that, that wouldn't be good for anyone so um, the, the, the final um, kind of discussion point here is uh, how you can access the, the relevant um, funding for, for this apprenticeship and, and for all apprenticeships really um, so, in terms of um, funding eligibility, um, the way that that works is uh, essentially, I think I mentioned this earlier, if, if your company um, has an annual payroll bill of three million pounds or more, uh, then your company will be paying into the apprenticeship levy. Those funds will, will build up in your company's apprenticeship levy account and they can be spent on apprenticeship training only. Um, this course is, is covered under that. Um, once you um, exhaust all of those uh, apprenticeship levy funds, um, for instance, if your company's paying in £10,000 a month and they put 10 people onto this apprenticeship course, that might exhaust your, your funds. Um, what happens is then you will be deferred onto what's called the um, co-investment fund, um, which means that you know, this, the co-investment fund is an unlimited fund um, from the government, which um, provides you with 95% of the overall funding uh, for the course. So um, if you kind of defer onto the, the co-investment fund, um, your organisation would be responsible for paying 5% uh, of the overall training cost, which in this case, um, I know the, the, the funding for this course is set at £9,000. So, uh, you know, the funding would be £450, which... Um, I don't know what you, you think, Mel and Kate, but to me that's, um, you know, some serious value for money, you know, a £9,000 qualification for £450, essentially. There's just one extra thing to, to add in with my sort of payroll hat on, is that, of yep. course, as soon as you recruit an apprentice, you stop paying any employer's national insurance on them if they are up to the age of 25, so up until their 25th birthday. So that's another... You know, 13.8 percent saving uh, on your salary bill um, because there's a national insurance exemption for um, recruiting apprentices which of course you learn about during the apprenticeship because you've got to know how to do that <laughs> national insurance exemption so you train people how to save you money um, by having them as apprentices that's right and i think there are there are some government schemes out there at the moment where employers receive a payment of you know roughly sort of 1500 pounds to 2000 pounds for recruiting an apprentice uh, depending on their, their age um, so there's lots of incentives out there for employers to to recruit apprentices or to use apprenticeships um, to upskill their, their current staff uh, and that's you know certainly something that we can share more information on if if anyone uh, would like that they, you know please do do ask and uh, and get in touch with us for that um, so as we can see then you know in terms of funding um, you know nine thousand pounds will either come from your apprenticeship levy account that your your company has or it will or the 95% um, of the funding will come from the co-investment fund um, so no one is excluded from this um, you know you, you can get that, that funding um, so if you do have any questions about funding as well please do get in touch with us and, and we can answer any any questions for you um, so in terms of next steps then um, you know if you are interested in, in the uh, apprenticeship scheme for yourself or for your your team perhaps um the first thing to do is you know talk to us um you know speak to us about about your requirement about you know what it is that you're looking to do because um the, the beauty of apprenticeships is that they're, they're flexible and that they can be tailored to to, to your organization and to, to your team so speak to us about what you want to achieve and um and what you want to get out of it and, and we can work with you to, to put a tailored solution together um, the, the next step after that really is that you know we'll help you engage with your learning and development team or your HR team or you may already be in touch with them about apprenticeships but if not we can help you to um, explain the, the apprenticeship to them and, and get them on 
get them on your team, uh, so to speak, so that they're, they're happy for you to put yourself or, or your team through the apprenticeship. Um, and then our team will then help with um, the, the, the actual onboarding of, of your uh, yourself or your team. So we take the stress out of that. Um, we, we take you through a process called um, signing up, uh, which uh, is essentially what it says in the tin, where we um, will arrange a time and date to, to speak with the, the learners that are going to come onto the program, um, talk them through uh, the, the signing up paperwork, because the, with it being government funding, there, there is a lot of um, paperwork that we, that we need to go through, but we get that done in a roughly 45 minute um, session with, with each learner, um, and we explain all of the um, do's and don'ts throughout the, the apprenticeship. Um, and then from that point, um, the learner would be given a, a formal start date, and uh, and then Kate, I believe you would take it from there to uh, to give them their their first piece of learning. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and just to to be clear, then Kate, would, would, are you going to be the the first um, kind of mentor for for any students that come through uh, this apprenticeship? Then I think that's the plan. If that's yeah. what boss says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got a, a bank of people that are raring to to join the team to start training people. I think the thing about payroll professionals are they want to train new people coming up. And um, Kate is our first mentor. Um, and um, and then uh, once I think Kate can only do so many, <laughs> that'd be great if she yeah. could do everyone. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then we'll we'll have, we've got a bank of uh, fantastic payroll uh, professionals that are, are really looking forward to helping the new generation, no matter how old, um, work up the ranks and and become payroll professionals. Because I just like to say that everyone around the world is worrying about who's going to be the next payroll professional. So it's not just a UK problem; it's everywhere around the world that they're worried about who's who's going to be the next people uh, within the profession. So if we can help with that, then uh, I think we're going in the right direction. Yeah, fantastic. Well, um, as it stands, there, there aren't any questions, so we must have done a brilliant job of explaining everything to, to everyone um, to, to this point. Um, and uh, I know that we are running out of time, so um, if there are any questions, um, please do feel free to, to get in touch with us um, on the, the contact details that you can see on the screen now. Uh, you know, we're happy to help with uh, you know a discussion and and you know talk to you about what what you you're looking to achieve and you know make sure that the apprenticeship's right for for you and in, in, in your organisation. Um, so there, there's our contact details. Please feel free to get in touch. Um, and then you know finally, I just want to say thank you, um, Mel and and Kate for joining us. Uh, the, you know the apprenticeship scheme uh, that that we're offering sounds absolutely fantastic. So. Um, you know, let's uh, look forward to to the first enrolment of, of students, which um, I know will be taking place in during Q, Q1 of uh, 2021. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for joining us, both of you. Thank you very thank much. You, Sam.